Hey everyone, it's Alexander Robinson. Welcome to the channel. This is my review for At Midnight, which is a 2023 romantic comedy that recently came out on Paramount+. Plus. The movie is about an actress who is filming the third film in a superhero trilogy uh, with her boyfriend. Uh, the actress is played by Monica Barbaro, aka Phoenix from Top Gun Maverick. So during shooting of this third film, uh, she finds out that her boyfriend is having an affair, and so She's distraught, but they have to continue shooting this movie. And to make things a lot more complicated, they have to shoot the rest of the movie in Mexico City. So the cast and crew is booked into this really luxurious hotel. And there's a staff member of the hotel, played by Diego Bonetta, who is basically tasked with taking care of certain members of the crew, more specifically, Monica Bavaro's character, Sophie. What starts off as a really awkward and uncomfortable first meeting between Alejandro and Sophie eventually evolves into a friendship and could possibly develop into a romance, which complicates matters considering that uh, Sophie is only in Mexico City to shoot a movie, and Alejandro has plans of his own to open a hotel of his own somewhere else in America. I knew nothing about this movie going in. Uh, the only thing I knew about it was that Monica Barbaro is in it, who, as I mentioned before, is Phoenix from Top Gun Maverick, and I really liked her in that movie. And also the synopsis actually sounded a bit intriguing. It uh, kind of steered me the wrong way in terms of what this movie actually was, uh, because the synopsis that I read uh, that you can find on IMDb makes it sound like this is more of a When Harry Met Sally type of movie, where these two characters are just in a friendship. But what this movie ends up being is a romantic comedy that tries to harken back to rom-coms of the 1950s, sort of like Roman Holiday or maybe even The Apartment. Huh? This isn't either of those movies. Like, this is not even in the same league. Though it does attempt to try to be like those movies because there are no modern songs for the soundtrack. It's mostly an original score, which I found to be really good. And most of the characters certainly feel more real than they would in other romantic comedies. Does it reinvent the wheel in terms of this genre? No, not at all. It's got certain tropes that you'd expect from a rom-com. It's got a handful of cliches. Some of them are cliches that I just kind of wish these movies would stop altogether. But I give this movie a pass because it does a really good job at avoiding all of the really terrible romantic comedy cliches. The ones that I absolutely hate. More specifically, the cliche of the couple has a falling out because of a failure to communicate and they won't talk about their problems. There isn't really anything to spoil with this movie. No big surprises, but you do have the trapping of the couple has a falling out in the third act. But when you watch it, it actually is believable. You see why they had a falling out. And considering the circumstances that these characters were in, it makes you really wonder, is it worth repairing? So even with that specific cliche that I hate, the movie did a good job at turning it around in its favor. The other really good thing about this movie, and ultimately why it worked for me, was the relationship between your two leads. Monica Barbaro and David Bonetta have really good chemistry with each other. I just found them to be charming together. Like, they did a really good job at carrying this movie. And the romance really was probably one of the more believable romances I've seen in a while in terms of romantic comedies. And these two are ultimately why this movie works for me. Because when it started, that first act, I was not really on board with it. I thought there were a few too many eye-rolling moments. I thought Whitney Cummings as Sophie's agent was really over the top, but she's only in that first act and doesn't really appear throughout the rest of the movie. And I also thought the movie had a pretty cheap look to it. There was something about it that just didn't feel, I don't want to say like a real movie, but you can tell that there wasn't a whole lot of money spent on it. But once the second act kicked in and the two main characters actually got to know each other a little further, that's when I started getting invested in the movie. So at the end of the day, I'd say this is good, but it's not great. It's definitely one of the more authentic romantic comedies I've seen in a while. A lot of people are very mixed on this, but me myself, I found it to be a really, 
really charming movie. I don't give it a strong recommendation, but it's certainly a very sweet movie that if you have Paramount Plus and you're looking for something to watch around this Valentine's Day holiday, then I'd say this is worth it. And there you go, that's my review for At Midnight. I hope you enjoyed it, and now I wanna know what you guys think about the movie. If you've seen it, what did you think? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell button to get notifications. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd. I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, have a good day, and take care of yourselves.